In the news tonight, Nandali court unprepared by lockdown. New procedures for businesses to open. And life returns to Suva after lockdown. From the studios of FBC Suva, Edwin Nan. Bulawnaka, Fiji. People in Nandali outside Nosori say they were caught off guard by the 14-day extension of the lockdown in the area. One resident, Waisale Tangitambua, rather Tingatambua, says most of them were not prepared with food rations and other families' needs to last the next two weeks. Sanya Nimboila reports. Families in the area had no time to come out of the four-day lockdown and prepare before going into another lockdown. We were not prepared for the lockdown because the four-day full lockdown was lifted early this morning and we had no time to prepare. We are staying in our own piece of land and uh, at around midday, the whole Nandali area was cordon off and swab test continues. Village Chairman William Wainingolo says the decision by the Health Ministry is the most logic step in protecting people in Mandali from the virus. The issue at the moment is that we don't know who has the virus, so I must salute the Health Ministry for the decision. Only this will enable us to contain the killer disease. Family members outside the containment area are helping buy food items and deliver to the Nandali village border. 14 cases of COVID-19 have emerged from the area. Four are linked to the Mokoi cluster, while eight are possible community transmission. Saini Animboila, FBC News. Businesses wanting to reopen under the COVID safe measures will have to sign on to and agree to firm protocols before they are allowed to operate. Permanent Secretary for Commerce and Trade Shaheen Ali says they are about to complete a digital portal where businesses with COVID safe procedures will be able to obtain passes. Kritika Kumar reports. All applications will be assessed on a case by case basis, including requests for curfew and movement passes for essential businesses and service providers. We, we have set up a team of assessors in the Ministry of Commerce who will be doing the initial assessment, getting all the documents from the business, the required SOPs, the staff list, etc., etc. Ali says businesses will have to meet some very strict criteria to qualify for the passes. It's, it's only for essential business and we have um, created a, um, a web page where all the information regarding essential business is uh, listed. Permanent Secretary for Health Dr. James Fong yesterday announced that employers and businesses need to put careful thought into COVID save operations plan. We want you to reopen, but we want, we want you to reopen. We want you to employ people because we need your full might behind alleviating the socio-economic burden of this pandemic. Dr. James Fong has urged businesses not to begin this process with a temporary timeline in mind and to put forward COVID safe business plans for the long term. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Suva City came to life this morning following the lifting of the lockdown, a breath of fresh air for thousands stuck within the four walls of their homes for the last four days, after what's been described by some as four long days critical to combating COVID-19. The city was bustling again with essential businesses reopening operations and people returning to work. Koroi Tandudala reports. Among those returning to work is a vendor who is elated to be able to reopen her stall at the market and earn an income. I woke up and baked some pastries to sell. I'm really grateful to be able to come to the market because this is my source of income. Riaz Khan says he and his fellow taxi drivers are affected by the pandemic and they are grateful for the chance to operate. The lockdown was tough, no earning at all. Being at least a few run today is very helpful for us. The pandemic is also taking a toll on parents worrying about where to get their next meal from. Putting food on the table for my family and my children is hard, especially under these circumstances. Interestingly, the lockdown left many people craving for certain food items, which was the first thing they went after this morning. I was first in line at our local bread shop this morning. We had a few dollars left and first thing this morning is buying bread and butter. Notably, everyone out today were adhering to the COVID-19 safe measures. Everyone was wearing face masks and people practicing physical distancing when lining up outside supermarkets and shops. Koroi Tandulala, FBC News.
And supermarkets across the capital city were once again buzzing with Fijians back in stores after four days of lockdown. Many say they had run out of food and needed to restock on essentials. Christiana Uluwai reports. As soon as shops opened, residents around Suba were ready to fill up their trolleys. To come to town to buy some of our food stuff. So otherwise you have another lockdown again across another curfew. Majority of these people have exhausted their food rations over the last four days of lockdown. Hence, they lined up here outside the supermarket to restock. I know that movement was restricted during the lockdown, which is why we were not able to do our shopping. We rushed to town this morning because we have run out of ration. Sikele Kanavakatini says he needs a mobile phone charger to be able to stay up to date on the virus and keep in touch with families. I've been searching throughout all the large supermarkets that might be selling multi-charges too, because communications on a daily basis is very important to me. Kanavakatini says he is working on the basis that there could be more lockdowns in the near future. We are preparing just in case there is another lockdown on Friday, because we are just ready for the advisories from the government. Many families say they buy supplies for a week, but with everyone staying home since the lockdown, groceries ran out faster than usual. Christiana Uluai, FBC News. Bus operation times across Viti Levu have been amended in light of the revised curfew hours from 6 p.m. to 4 a.m. daily. Fiji Bus Operators Association President Nisar Ali says companies have been advised to finish their runs by 5 p.m. to enable staff to get home before the curfew. With most buses operating within containment areas, Ali says the last runs will likely be around 5.15 p.m. By quarter past five, uh, the bus will leave uh, each uh, uh, bus station. And by the time they reach the end of the destination, by quarter to six, they finish off and they, they can go back to the depots. And we now join Lena Reese live. Lena, the few number of businesses and government services which are open will have to relook at their operations. Edwin, the revised curfew hours is from 6 p.m. to 4 a.m. daily, and this is for the whole of Viti Levu. In light of this, companies and essential businesses will need to revise working hours until further notice, and this is to allow for their workers to also reach home on time, especially if they need to catch a bus. We received calls today where some were worried about shopping. We know that some supermarkets have already revised their opening hours because they too will need to close before the 6 p.m. curfew and allow their staff to reach home on time. Uh, we also know that uh, a lot of the larger essential businesses will be closing as early as 4 p.m. Edwin. Nakalina, up ahead. Family struggles amid COVID crisis. And police review internal processes. Welcome back. A family in Langilangi settlement, Suva, with six children, is struggling to make it through the COVID crisis and put food on the table. It's a tale similar to many other households worst affected by, economic, by the economic slump made worse by the second wave of the virus. Kelly Vadala reports children in this family are being taught the values of sacrifice, simple living and having patience. Apulo Sindomoni Kimbao has been out of work since March and with many mouths to feed, every day is a struggle to get by. I am thankful we received our rations today because it's not easy being the only breadwinner at this time. Domoni Kimbao says they're living off his meager savings but that won't last very long. There's no other assistance apart from the money I saved. My children are still schooling so while we are at home, I have taught them to live simple and be grateful. The family is praying that things return to some form of normality so their jobs are available and they can at least have food security. I want my children to be back at school to pick up with their education. Life is hard at the moment and sometimes we go to sleep worried about our next meal. Nebaluwata Nebaluwanga is going through a similar situation. We ran out of food at home and right now this is our only hope. 
There are more families like these around Fiji with dwindling savings and no prospects for work anytime soon. But keeping the faith and taking it one day at a time. Kelly Vadalo, FBC News. It will take more time to win the war against the second wave of coronavirus, warns Permanent Secretary for Health Dr. James Fong. The B1617 variant, which was first detected in India, is more transmissible and the clusters locally are larger and widespread. Ritika Pratap reports there are now 49 active cases in isolation facilities, of which 34 are local transmissions. This is not a 30-day war. The warning is loud and clear, as the situation is worse than the outbreak last year. It took us that same length of time, exactly 30 days, to contain last year's outbreak of COVID-19. I'm telling you now, this outbreak is more serious than anything we've faced before. Over 7,800 contacts of existing cases in Suva and Nosori have been put under quarantine after being tracked down during the four-day lockdown. New cases are being recorded nearly every day. We may have found thousands of contacts, but it will take many more days of testing to know how many people may be positive and how our containment strategy must evolve in response. Lockdown measures are still in place because the ministry is trying to sort through 11,000 swabs taken in the past four days and are yet to be tested. About 4,000 will be sent to a private lab in Australia tomorrow, while the rest will be tested locally. We should make COVID safe measures a habit. Wear a mask when you are out or out of your home. Uh, and when the opportunity to get vaccinated comes, step forward and get it vaccinated. The ministry should have firm answers on the lockdown and containment measures by this weekend. Ritika Pratap. FBC News. The Southern Division has had 41 arrests for breaching curfew orders and health restrictions. Three men in their 40s were found gathering in Samambula and six, including a juvenile, were found playing volleyball in the Loisuva. Two people were arrested along Bureta and Vatuanga for loitering. A 19-year-old was arrested with four juveniles while sitting along Browning Street in Raiwanga, while a 24-year-old man was found loitering along Dombati. 14 people were found playing cards in Nambua, while a 17-year-old student was found loitering in Cunningham. Four people were found drinking kava at Newtown, while five people were arrested for loitering along the Tandevo area in Nabua. The Eastern Division recorded four cases, while two cases were recorded in the Western Division. With thousands of people staying at home due to the COVID-19 safety measures, more Fijians than ever are surfing the internet on some form of a smart device. With demand for data higher than last year's COVID scare, internet providers are trying to ensure reliable supply across the country, especially for those who are working or studying from home. Lina Rees reports. The bulk of data consumption is for video streaming services like Netflix and Amazon Prime, as well as social media sites. In 18 April, the overall traffic on our network has increased uh, progressively. As of early this week, data consumption has almost uh, doubled. This is obviously due to the uh, fact that more people are now staying at home. Telecom Fiji has also noted a spike in online video conferencing tools such as Microsoft Teams and Zoom. Vodafone Fiji has around 800,000 subscribers with 80% on smartphones actively using the internet. Digicel Fiji CEO Farid Mohammed in a statement to FBC News says more companies having to adopt work from home measures has seen an increase in data traffic. Mohammed says that since the last lockdown in 2020, data traffic has seen an increase by more than 100 percent. Lena Reese, FBC News. The Fiji police force says a person caught impersonating a policeman for three weeks took advantage of a situation created by COVID-19. Acting Commissioner Rusiate Tundravu says with more than 3,000 officers on the ground, he can't rule out the failure of a proper audit. Apanisa Wangairandovu reports the man was pretending to be a police officer at the Rewanga police station in Suva. The impersonator managed to convince officers that he was locked out of Singatoka due to movement restrictions and decided to report for work in Suva. It might be because of the, the, the posture of the operations and where they concentrate their effort to. Uh, they, they thought uh, in the initial stage that uh, he's coming in as a police officer himself. Officers thought the pretender was one of their own. Tundravu says the man is being charged 
the force is responsible to fixing its practices so that such an incident is prevented in the future. Our internal uh, investigation is going on to just to just just to try and see what went wrong and then uh, get it improved. Meanwhile, with frontline workers, including police, have been out in numbers since the second wave kicked in. The health ministry says Fijians must do their part. We must sustain our commitment to the measures we know can keep us safe. Everyday decisions by ordinary Fijians taken together can set us down a safer and more sustainable path. Tundrabu has assured the force will continue to assist the health ministry in the fight against the pandemic. Apenisongrandovu, FBC News. Radisson Blue has been recognized as a 2021 Traveler's Choice Award winner for in a top 10% hotels worldwide. This achievement celebrates businesses that consistently deliver fantastic experiences to travelers around the globe. Having earned great traveler reviews on TripAdvisor over the last 12 months, General Manager Charles Holmesy says in a challenging year, the resort has stood out by providing great service and travel-safe experiences. Holmesy adds their recognition is an incredible honor made possible by each member of the hotel. Here are the local exchange rates as set early this morning. The Fiji dollar was pegged higher against three of the international currencies we cover, but lost ground against our two major trading partners, the Aussie and Kiwi dollars, as well as the Euro and the Japanese Yen. Looking at the prices on the commodities market, crude oil dropped a few dollars at $64 a barrel, gold dropped to $1,866 per ounce, and silver closed down at $28.05 per ounce. And we now join Sinifa from HFC Bank to give us the latest figures from the money markets. Good evening. It's a quiet day midweek for the Forex space with little action and a whole lot of consolidation. Yesterday's Reserve Bank of Australia board meetings did not provide information that had surprised markets and rate hike conditions are unlikely to be reached until at least 2024 at their earliest. Meanwhile, the U.S. dollar hovered near a six-year low against its Canadian counterpart and nursed losses against European currencies as expectations that U.S. interest rates will remain low undermine the greenback. The minutes from the U.S. Federal Reserve's most recent meeting due later tonight are expected to confirm that policymakers think a rate hike is still in the distance. Investors will also be scrutinizing consumer price data in Britain and Canada later tonight to determine how quickly major economies will be forced to rein in the accommodative monetary policy, which holds the key to the dollar's trend in the medium term. That's about it from your HFC Bank, Inaka. Adversities at the Lotoka Hospital have paved the way for innovation. Chief Medical Advisor jo Dr. Chermesa Tundravu says Lotoka Hospital will pilot the telehealth project and surgical outpatient services will be provided through an e-consultation platform. This service was suspended after the hospital became a full-time COVID-19 facility. Dr. Tunravu adds the platform will be run with the support of community partners. In the next few days, the hospital will be consulting its SOPD patients to launch this service. Since the onset of the pandemic, the ministry has been looking at uh, similar projects in the field, the field of telehealth. And uh, again, it's an indication of the dimension of health service uh, delivery that we are scoping out in this uh, post-COVID uh, new normal uh, area. That is the latest from my end, but coming up after the break, computer science teacher breaks barriers. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Ministry of Environment is working on adopting practices that protect, manage and restore nature and preserve our pristine environment.
Permanent Secretary Joshua Wycliffe, in commemorating the National Dialogue on Boost Nature Positive Production, says they are discouraging deforestation and other activities that harm the environment. Wycliffe highlighted the importance of restoring degraded tropical forest landscapes in mitigating the impact of climate change on biodiversity. Agroecological practices uh, such as conservation agriculture, agroforestry and regenerative agriculture can and will restore and maintain ecosystem services like soil health, flowing waterways and the ability to keep carbon out of the atmosphere. Juggling her role as a full-time lecturer and working mother did not stop 31-year-old Wafa Warda from following her passion of being an entrepreneur. Warda, a computer science lecturer at the University of the South Pacific, also runs a wedding planning business. Jeshulal has this story. Warda had always wanted to share her knowledge of science and while lecturing at USP, the multi-talented mother opened a backup business. While I was uh, doing my bachelor's uh, of software engineering degree, I had some. Uh, I had a few friends who were interested in getting me to do their makeup. So uh, we explored that a bit, and I, I ended up doing all my friends' makeup, and uh, this eventually became a sort of a, a a business or a hobby that I did in the weekends. With the current restrictions, Wada is mentoring students while managing to spend quality time with a seven-year-old daughter. With challenges come daily experiences, and Wada's road to success was not easy. I do juggle a few things, uh, so that that my uh, hair and makeup uh, business in the weekends, and uh, raising my daughter, uh, living with family, um, and now that we have uh, the COVID. Uh, situation in Fiji. Uh, teaching online has become quite uh, challenging as well. Warda hopes her teaching will build in great career pathways for her students. Jeshulal, FBC News. And with schools closed and movement restricted, students and teachers are unable to keep up with their curriculum. However, this is not the case for 15 students and four teachers of Mode Secondary School stranded in Suva for a month now. They're using this opportunity to learn and undertake various assignments put together by the Education Ministry. A home away from home for these students who are unable to travel back home due to the lockdown. After breakfast, we have to do assignment from 10 to 12. So by now, all the assignments have been done. And we thank the Ministry of Education for also uh, having our worksheets from uh, year 1 to year 13. I'm thankful that I can still use this time keeping abreast with my schoolwork despite the challenges we are going through right now. This group of students and teachers had traveled to Viti Levu to participate in a cricket tournament last month. Alufa says the lockdown has served as good exposure for seniors who will soon take up studies in various tertiary institutions in Vitilibu. Uh, we went to um, uh, Forca on Monday uh, and Tuesday we visited FNPF. Eye opening experience. We learned so much about prominent entities in the classroom, but actually being here and seeing it firsthand is indeed an overwhelming experience. The 15 students, 4 teachers and 5 parents are currently being housed here in Kinoya and the Education Ministry had been in constant contact with the principal should there be any further assistance needed and to determine their next course of action. The principal would like to assure families and parents back at home in Modelau that they are safe and healthy. Nunga, FBC News. And now we catch up with Jamie for all the latest in sports. Nakayan, good evening in sports tonight. Nakuanga offs out of and Fiji Archers still on target. This and more coming up. Olympic Games gold medalist Masivesi Ndakuwanga has turned down the offer to be part of the historical two test matches between the Flying Fijians and the All Blacks. Ndakuwanga confirmed to FBC Sports that he was approached by the Fiji Rugby Union 
but had to reluctantly decline due to personal commitments. I was approached to join the Flying Fijians team for the All Blacks test match. I was grateful to be even considered to join, but I had to decline because of family commitments and it'll be hard for me to fly to another country. The main uh, focus at the moment is to support government in all its uh, initiatives to try and control the COVID-19 virus. At the same time, we are having discussions with uh, the all our players uh, based overseas about their availability to uh, represent the Flying Fijians. This will be an opportunity for other local and overseas players to step up. I will be joining Montpellier in July, but this will be a good opportunity for other players, both local and overseas, as well to step up and be part of this historical match. Flying Fijian center Semiran Ranra managed to sneak in for try and Bristol's 39-7 win over Gloucester in Premiership Rugby yesterday. While another player with links to Fiji, former England number eight, Nathan Hughes, also registered a try for the Bears. While the Tokyo Olympics are just 69 days away, the doors to the Summer Games haven't completely closed for some athletes. Team Fiji's head of delegation, Patrick Bauer, says representatives who may not make it on merit can qualify through the Oceania selection quota. Akuladama with the details. A 54-member team is expected to represent Fiji at this year's Tokyo Olympic Games. So I would say uh, definitely we're, we're very positive about moving ahead and looking at probably taking a team of 54 with those who are yet to qualify. All hope now lies with World Archery Oceania to determine which recurve archers from the region will get a spot to the Tokyo Olympic Games in July. Local archers are praying the last five qualifying rounds will proceed as scheduled, but the pandemic is casting doubts. Tali Matarakula reports. It's now a waiting game for local arches. We're hoping that uh, we're able to complete the rest as scheduled as we move forward. Um, obviously, it's not ideal um, with the restrictions in place regarding preparation and practice. But I've, I've been through it before and we'll try to make the most of what we can with the resources that are available. Competitors know their chances are slim if the governing body makes the final call. Well, normally what happens is uh, they give it to the country that's already there. We, we, normally we, we, we want somebody to qualify on merit so that you know it's like it's clear. If it goes to the Oceania Archery Association then like uh, anyone can get the spot. As of the last qualifying round in early April, none of the three hopefuls have reached the standard points. They have their fingers crossed for the remaining qualifiers to get the green light in order to hit the target. Tali Terkula, FBC Sports. Weightlifting Fiji continues to hold virtual training sessions since the onset of COVID-19 restrictions. More than 20 lifters are currently being monitored by national coach Henry Elder. Elder says it's tough not training together in the gym, but they must be innovative in order to keep athletes on track. He adds a program had already been planned following the first lockdown period, so lifters are adapting well. I have watched them. I, we have uh, sessions, uh, one to two sessions a week where I, uh, I do a virtual session with them. So, so we do some face to, uh, uh, FaceTime uh, training and I, I view them. Uh, I take some pictures and some videos, and then we uh, we talk about their sessions. That's it from Sports Tonight. Coming up in Weird and Wonderful, a plane purposely sunk to create a tourist attraction. Find out more after the break. Cloudy conditions with brief showers experienced over the eastern parts of the larger islands today. Evening thunderstorms expected elsewhere. Looking at the west, fine apart from isolated afternoon or evening showers and possible, excuse me, possible for the western division. Eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, cloudy periods with some showers. In the north, fine apart from isolated afternoon or evening showers and possible thunderstorms. At sea for southwest Viti Levu waters, Kandavu Passage and Southern Koro Sea, east to southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, rough seas. 
For the rest of Fiji waters, easterly winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. The next high tide is at 12.44 a.m. tomorrow with low tide at 6.35 a.m. Sunrise is at 6.35. And the outlook for tomorrow, cloudy periods with brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of Viti Levu and Vanua Levu, Kandavu, Lomai Viti and Taviuni. For Friday, similar conditions will prevail. And recapping our main stories, Nandali caught unprepared by lockdown, new procedures for businesses to open and life returns to Suva after lockdown. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM to our poll question. This week we are asking, has the Suva Nosori curfew helped contain COVID-19? Visit our FBC News website to answer. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our social media accounts including Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. You can also download our FBC app to keep updated with the very latest in news and sports and listen to our six radio stations live. That's your news this evening. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Modemanda.